Good morning, everyone. Welcome uh, to Laurel Park. A happy Saturday. Naomi Tucker with Keith Fustel next to me. How are uh -huh. we doing today, Keith? Uh, yesterday was a day of big prices, as yes. you highlighted earlier yes, to uh, me. If you had success and you were picking some winners, you were picking some, you know, good winners. You know, not the, not the 420 variety, but double digits. A bounded yesterday. Yeah, that, that, that was really good. You like that. You know, I, I like I'm all about value. Sniffing out prices, you know, I know you use the uh, O'Dwyer horse on the turf, right, in, in your uh, selection. I did, the so first yeah. leg of the Stronach 5, so that was. Yeah, so big, big price there. But, yeah, that's a, that, you know, that's kind of par for the course at Laurel. I mean, these, these are some really tough races to get through. Yeah, and especially the turf races have been incredibly competitive and absolute mm -hmm. treat to watch. We have a few on offer uh, again today. Of course, as it's Saturday, we are merely one week away from this year's Maryland Million Day. Static day, October the 23rd. Do you make a note, 11.30 a.m. Mm. post, so not our usual 12.40 p.m., 11.30 a.m. It is bound to be a day full of a spectacle. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about a couple more of the pre-entries that have gone out later on in Lightning Round. We covered the, the classic and the turf sprint today. Turf sprint especially deep field. So let's hope that they were all lined up. And as handicappers, Keith, we, we might have our work cut out. Absolutely. It's going to be a job doing the, doing the odds, trying to get through, do some picks. But uh, yeah, it's always a great day, though. Once again, everybody get back here. A larger crowd, I'm sure, on hand. I'm sure it's going to be packed here for Maryland Million Day. 1130 post. Just remember that. 1130 a.m. post uh, next Saturday. Another big event coming up in the next a couple of months is at our sister track, Goldstream Park, Saturday, January the 29th, the Pegasus World Cup pre-sale tickets. You can actually get your hands on them already. Do go to PegasusWorldCup.com to get your chance to attend this incredible day, of course, in sunny Florida during the winter. And we do have a, a sign-up promo if you are trying to catch some of those prices that were plenty yesterday. A limited offer of a $1,000 sign-up bonus when you sign up with First Bet. It's our official wagering a partner. Use that promo code MJC thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, Keith, uh, let's have a look at the current uh, track conditions. We're okay. fast and uh, firm. You can see that the rail is out again, trying to make sure that we have mm -hmm. that uh, sort of beautiful turf course and making a full use of it. And another lovely day, 74 mm -hmm. degrees Fahrenheit. Absolutely. Gorgeous day again, right? Now, a little bit of a breeze flowing through here in the paddock area. So, yeah, love it. Um, there's a chance. I look. There's some, there's some maybe some rain popping up. I don't think it's going to be a whole lot. There's a small chance, but even looking forward to next week, uh, you know, projected forecast looks very good. Yeah, let's hope that this good yeah. weather continues. Of we will keep you abreast of anything that changes throughout the day in terms of the going. Let's start with the nine race card mm -hmm. that we have going for us here today. Early pick of five starting right here in race number one. Six furlong the distance, Phillies and Mestre rolling up, claiming 16 to 12 and a half thousand nominees of two a lifetime. We'll start with the horse that uh, I use on top, the number two, Live A, mm -hmm. because we do have a video of her last race that was on the main track. This was an off the turf event. You can see she's right there up front. She out broke the field, shot to the front, worked very, very hard to it. Didn't, wasn't able to hold off Princess Kokoch in there, but Princess Kokoch is very tough. I did like the way she continued to hold on to the wire. That's the case. She was in the three path. Did closer towards the rail was the, even the better spot to be that particular afternoon. We know how good Princess Kokoch is right now. She's thriving for the, for, for the Jerry Rob stable. So yeah. That was a good effort. The key is six furlongs for her and Hufflepuff. I mean, yeah. you know, these two, they haven't gotten it done at the distance. Maybe they will. They're the controlling speeds, it looks like, in here. They will probably try to avoid an early duel. That would, I would think that would be highly recommended for both riders to stay out of that duel early. But I'm, I'm thinking something might develop by the time they hit the top of the stretch. Butter Pecan, we know how it's kind of tough. This newer surface has been a little tricky to close a lot of ground, you know, mm -hmm. in the dirt. Butter Pecan had a similar kind of setup last time, shifted out five wide, looked like she was going to continue on. She just didn't. I'm going to take one more shot here. She's gotten the job done at six and a half. I know she can get the six. Uh, 31 to 60 day layoff is a good kind of angle for this barn. So let's take a little slight upset shot with the five. Butter Pecan to run down the speed. 
I kind of respect her, however, and third, and I do mm -hmm. agree with your assessment that perhaps for Live 8 is that furlong extra a bit too far. But if you look back at that last video that, that we just saw, mm -hmm. she actually started finding again at yeah. the wire. She was in hand, and that makes the, that, that encourages me to say yeah. she can see out that extra furlong. And of course, Hufflepuff, mm -hmm. you know, she's been incredibly game. She does drop back down to this level again after she nearly got the win at this level yeah. two starts uh, ago. I think she's going to get a nice token trip from that high a draw again. Race number two, we kickstart that early pick for sequence. Now, if we get a couple more prices, it will pay uh, quite nicely, wouldn't it, Keith? It would, it would. We're going to have a you know big heavy favorite with Scratched. Morning line favorite, the four out of race number two. Miz and Arrow also take out the five. Miss Spot of Gold. $24 ticket we're going to go for today. Uh, too deep to get you started. The one and two show some arch shenanigans. I'm going to key around these two. Uh, floating by, might have a shot. I mean, to, to get in, doesn't have a lot of speed. Back quickly. Uh, too deep in race three with the six and the seven. I'm going to try to beat the favorite. You can never tell. But the special freedom, secret prize, Trombetta, I like in there a lot. Race four, four, nine, ten, eleven. Wrap it up in the fifth with the one, six. Uh, I'm sorry, no, no, with the one, six, and ten. Yeah, correct. And I, I tell you, these races are, are not easy. I, this is kind of a base ticket. If you can add a little bit, please do so. But uh, I'm trying to find one where I can trim it down a little bit to get you started. This this looked like the, the better of the two for me. I'll start with that, a $24 ticket. Yeah, perhaps uh, throw in a couple of other horses if mm -hmm. you fancy them. A $24 is not bad for mm -hmm. you know, a nice early pick for investment. Possible returns are quite high here at the Laurel Park yes. at the Maryland Jockey Club. Let's talk about race number two. And you're right. A big scratch of the number four Miz in air. I do say we would have had her high on our tickets ourselves. Uh, ended up landing on the number one Shamar Shenanigan. So did you, which mm -hmm. I like. Uh, she's been winning regularly. Did get DQ'd uh, three starts ago when putting her nose in front. But I like her style. She, she gets herself in a stalking position and she keeps grinding it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she did you know quite well after doing all the chasing i didn't think she was going to sustain she came back actually at timonium to reel in the speed and got it done she draws inside that's perfect for her mm -hmm. uh Mizanair was going to be your speed so was the five was going to chase so now looking at the race breaking it down there's not a real true speed horse in here so i think some march and again and she might have an edge over congress hall just based on you know dealing with the distance she's had that distant experience congress hall though coming into this race a little better form than the last time she went the route of ground. So uh, I'm going to hedge towards the inside here, one, two, two, one. Yeah, I, I use Shimmer Sanenigan on top, use the number two underneath. Ended up using the number seven towards the outside, floating by. Mm -hmm. She does have a bit of a closing style, but I'm hoping that yeah. perhaps Shimmer and I can, can move forward and give her something to run at. Mm -hmm. She's been on the up, it seems, in her last uh, four races. I'm hoping that they're going to go fast enough for her. You're right, the mm -hmm. speed came out. That doesn't help her, mm -hmm. but we'll see if we can get the speed and the closer at home uh, yeah. in the exact okay. here. In race number three is Maiden 16, level seven furlongs the distance and Keith you know what you always come up with these uh, stats mm -hmm. and for some reason they always seem to come in so no. I am not <laughs> sitting on these there you go the one that we have for today in race number three not all of them but you know they, they, they've been do. pretty good and they've been pretty good and sometimes do. we catch a, a pretty good price so secret prize I think will will be okay maybe in that seven to two range uh, maybe a little bit more but Here's my angle uh, with this runner for Trombetta. Okay, last three years, three for 10, 30%, four for 10 in the money. Maiden claimers, first off the barn changers. Their ROI, it's 360. Yeah, you never call, I think, is going to take a lot of play and might be the predominant speed from the inside. But this is going to be first time blinkers on the dirt. We're going to go turf to dirt. Uh, I like that angle. I like that stat. I'm looking further down. I think this filly's going to be a little bit better on the dirt. The breeding side, second dam was Bamba. We some of the some of the horses. She's, you know, she's folded around here very good. This, but uh, the mare bread and butter is a fool to plum. All dirt runners we've seen offspring run well on the dirt. I like Secret Prize. I think you're going to see a, a kind of a stalk and pounce kind of trip for this one. So your opinion is kind of the opposite of mine because I was wondering if the turf was what made her move forward in her second oh, start. Yeah. And if that's the case, uh, I'm not sure this is going to be enjoyable for her. I do use her <laughs> underneath because okay. you're mentioning the barn chase first in for the tag on the main mm -hmm. track as well. So in, like you said, first on the blinkers on the main track mm -hmm. too. So I definitely want to use her because of a fair few unknowns, but she'll have to translate that turf mm -hmm. performance yep. to the main track. So I use her underneath and uh, use the number six special freedom on top who you have in your exacta mm -hmm. as well. She gets back to the dirt. She 
definitely showed to me that she likes that main tracker a little bit better and significantly drops down as well from that maiden 40, maiden special weight to the maiden 16. I mean, that mini special weight try, she was severely outclassed. We had Belle of the North, yes. her jam is a half sister to Zenyatta. She did incredibly well, Belle of the North, uh, that it is. Of course, Zenyatta, we know what she did, uh, British Cup coming up soon. Uh, but special freedom, I think, to me, seems like the horse that's going to enjoy this mm -hmm. level, this group, and the main track. Aggressive move down here to the 16. She's flashed a little bit of talent. She does have that one big layoff on her page from March of 20 to August 21. The two back race on the dirt. The last time she was on the dirt, she run, went against the bias. She was, you know, three, four wide there. They were going quick. I don't think the fractions are going to be nearly as demanding uh, today. So she's going to stay within range, and this little drop should pick her head up. I expect a good performance out of her. Yeah, I used to number one, you never call my exacta because she's very sharp in her last race uh, over the mile at Penn National. I think she's going to try and shoot from the gate, mm -hmm. hug the rail here. She's got that low draw to help her out with that. Uh, she ca was campaigned in Florida before going to the McMahon mm -hmm. barn. And she's got some figures uh, on the throwback that could definitely have this field now. I don't believe she's going to run back up to those, that 70 yeah. buyer. But look, if she goes up to the 50 on the main track with that rail to her advantage, Angel mm -hmm. Cruz on board, she's going to be very dangerous in this. Yeah, spot. that's probably what it's going to take now to win it. Maybe a lower 50, 55 buyer could get it done. I don't know where that 70 came from. That's the, maybe <laughs> a little bit of an aberration. But uh, back to a fast track, second off the claim, these maiden claimers. It's okay. I went back like five years. Not a huge sampling, but a positive one for McMahon. Yeah, as we move along to race number four, which kickstarts the rainbow pick six, for which we have uh, quite a juicy carryover today. $11,714 starting right here in race number four. And we'll straight away uh, dive into your top mm -hmm. selection, Keith uh, Salamina, the number four, who we do have a video of her start that was on the turf right here at Laurel Park. She broke actually quite perfectly. She yeah. broke lovely. Look at her, just going straight forward. Unfortunately for her, a couple of other runners on the outside right uh, kind of <laughs> changed up her race. Yeah, the, the horse in the pink is so exciting. The name is escaping me. I, was, I think it was a Dale Cap. I'm not sure. Maybe it was... Uh, oh, Anyhow, she just got slammed, shuffled yeah. back, lost a ton of ground. You're, you're thinking, okay, the race is over for her. She's lost her folks. She regroups. And look at her here coming to the top of the stretch. Has a little traffic there. Still got five yeah. lengths or so. To yeah, make up five there. lengths to go. Had to navigate outside from behind rivals coming past the 316th. And she just sustains under pressure for Toledo. Uh, we know this combination is good. He's right back. I think she can move up a little bit of that, especially going second off of the break. Salamina, I think she'll hold an okay price. Maybe I have her lined a little high at 10. So Dwyer horses, they get funny money. Yeah, sometimes they, they get crushed, sometimes they don't. He's kind of a tough barn to line, but I think she's going to be okay because Tia China is going to take plenty of play. Her last two races yeah. look superior compared to these, but why the drop down to 16? Yeah, I, I use uh, T in China on top. You're mm -hmm. right, perhaps a little bit of a questionable drop from the allowance company and stakes company yeah. she held. But perhaps, I mean, it was a, a bit of a clunker last time out. Uh, it just seemed like she, she wasn't coming with her normal, uh, you know, her normal kick late. She was normally more fortly placed as well. I think she just didn't have a good race at all. And perhaps that was the reasoning for the bail stable to say, you know what, we're going to mm -hmm. give her an easier race, get some confidence back into her. If she gets back to some of the numbers that she ran, stakes level, allowance yeah. level, she should absolutely have these for breakfast. Yeah, it's weird. I, they're dropping her. I think she's going to have to do a lot of work chasing some of these speed types. There's some True. fast horses in here. This opening quarter and half is going to be quick. Uh, you've, you've got Minnetonka clearly on the engine. Yeah. Sassy Babe has shown speed. A couple of these other ones, Ordinary Girl. I think Sassy Babe with Lynch is going to try to drop in save some ground in behind horses and make a run from off the pace like she did a couple starts back. Even some nights. Take a look at the 11. The 11 draws in. The 3 is out. Pass yep. it on. Also take out the 12 and 13. But the 11 comes in here some nights adding Lasix for the first time. You look at some of these races. Not terrible with trouble in the 2 and Life company at Colonial. Uh, the 2 back try good. Our strong vows who she beat ran credibly against a little bit better company. I think she's a user in here to come running from off the pace. I do make sure to make a note mm -hmm. that the 11 draws in off the AEs. I use Sassy Babe underneath as well. Indeed, Fergal gets on board. She's first off the claim yeah. for the McMahon barn. She's shown great improvement since being campaigned on the turf. Has not run a bad race, as mm -hmm. Tim Tullock always likes <laughs> to say, on the turf whatsoever. Yeah. Like that draw with the speed. Do you have a bit of respect, though, for the number six, Minnetonka? Mm -hmm. She had an outside draw last time, managed to use her speed and perhaps some of that early gas, early energy to come over get the lead. 
I think she's going to find it easier to get forward from that middle draw mm -hmm. that she has here. Yeah, she's going to fly away from there. I don't think anybody is going to be within a length or two I'm into the turn. I could be wrong. She has a little bit of a hiccup out of the gate, and then possibly she's yeah. very fast. She gets a chance to relax. She's going to take a little bit further uh, against this group. But I'm going to key around in the four, even if you're going to go one step deeper. I've had a fifth horse maybe to use, mm -hmm. but this is a price as well. Bay of Angels has to run a little bit faster, but the setup is going to be uh, to her liking. She comes out of a race against what Dare to Try, I think, right? I mean, there was a horse that came back yep. and ran well. So there you go. Look, this is a, a good field to get you started in that mm -hmm. Rainbow Pick yeah. Six. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, get a price to really get that, uh, uh, get that, get the beautiful carryover towards mm -hmm. one of our lucky betters here today. As we'll take a quick break, and hopefully, I can find my words again after as well. <laughs> You'll be fine. Welcome back to Laurel Park. We are on race number five for the two-year-olds. And race number five also means we start the late pick five. We had a big carryover for the Rainbow Pick Six. But look yeah. at this late pick five carryover. $10,617 just to start you out. Good race again as well to get going with the ladies. Two-year-olds take the stage here. Seven furlongs at the distance in that spot. Do a spotlight here on the horse that I ended up using on Top, the number six Murph because we're looking at a well an absolute career highlight for mm -hmm. her there uh, you can see that she sat a, she's had a quite a lovely pocket trip yes. there you see she's on the rail just kind of you know biding her time saving mm -hmm. some ground but she looked really comfortable doing it because once the rail opens up she kind of just slips through and just blows them out of the water yeah it just draws off here by four and some change kept kept us some kept her business and uh, yeah steadily getting better I mean it looks like she was cut out to be a good horse my only question here and, and going back this is a tough for me kind of the elephant in the room that was Lasix on okay now it's like yep. soft I, you, you have to say you can't avoid it but you know that was a big jump up much much mm -hmm. more focused effort than I've seen from her she's got the finish now we're going from five and a half to seven as well a, a little tougher run stretching out but Malibu Moon Street cry she should be able to handle uh, the increase in distance you know who one that did was the one Dutata that was a crazy one right out from a half mile timonium to the mile last time <laughs> out at Laurel and just kind of moved up with ease mm -hmm. you know time not that great you got to have some talent to be able to do that. And she showed it right there for Hammy Smith and company. I'm going to use her into the mix to come running into the speed. I like on Frank and File on the outside. I thought this horse proven without Lasix last time out at yep. Timonium. Buff my boots, had it all her way on the front end. Now she got burned up next time out in a little bit of a duel. The, the works, look at the works. There's, there's Hugh McMahon special, a couple mile works leading into mm -hmm. this. They don't want a short horse. I don't think they're going to have a short horse. I like Len Frankenfile from just off of it. Slight upset. Yeah, I, I use her in my exacta because, in, agreed, you're right, that career best performance uh, was without Lasix, and she doesn't run on it today mm. either. Very good outside draw. She's strong late. I like uh, Charlie Marquez getting on board for the Man Stable as well. So fun race to try and figure out to see who has progressed oh. the most and continues to take that step forward. Mm -hmm. But one of the races I'm really looking forward to today actually is uh, race number six. Seven furlong the distance mm -hmm. for the three-year-olds and uh, three-year-olds, excuse me. Yeah, three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. First level allowance here, start of my late pick of four as well. I only use two horses in this. Now, I think this is a great race, but I am hoping I'm right. And Moquist is mm -hmm. going to show us even further how she's been continuing to develop for the Capuana. So do you use the number five fraudulent charge for Lacey Godet, who was a very tough two-year-old and has continued that progression into her three-year-old year. And then in race seven, this is wide open. Five and a half furlongs of distance. I used the five, the six, the eight, and the ten. I think there's a fair few that could really get the job done in there. Mm -hmm. And in race number eight, Eight, perhaps it's a bit of a gutsy single. And number six, Ink, on the outside for Claudio Gonzalez. Does step it up to this level, but ran against Alders at that option claim and started allows nearly best him. Literally, he missed the ball. He it looks like he won that race. Absolutely super sharp coming into this. Race number nine is the one, nine, excuse me, the one, two, and the three for me. Very cheap late pick four ticket. $12 yeah. flat, meaning 
add a couple of horses. If you're not mm. sold on the single, add another horse and off we go. Let's talk about race number six, Keith. You landed on Moquista as I well. I mean, let's look at that video. She's unbeaten in two starts. And uh, I think one of the most important notes is she ran one race after Bell of the North, one second faster. Mm -hmm over the seven furlongs distance that day. And look how comfortable she is. Yeah, yeah a little different than the race at Timoni where she was really hurried off of her feet, but she was able to kind of keep going repel the challenge there. She does it again, but much more relaxed and professional on the front end. Took the pressure well in hand through pretty good internals, 23-46. Picks it up here and really responds. I like her stride, the way she kind of kicks away late. Mm -hmm. uh, stretching out, I mean, right, I should say, stretching out from that race at Timoni just a little bit was no problem. Seven eights looks like it fits her. She might even be able to travel a little bit further, uh, kind of look against some of the breeding uh, on that bottom side. So, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, she was definitely helped, no doubt, by the inside last time. It's where you wanted to be. But against this group, she has an edge again, it looks like, with that early pace. I don't think she's going to have to be forced into it too much. I think she's going to be able to relax, control things up front, and have enough to turn away any challenges. The fraudulent charge is talented, and it so is Belle of the North. I agree. No, I think Moquist is going to get that beautiful inside run again. Now, I was posed this uh, question this morning by Bill Finley on the radio show, and I'm going to pose it to you because mm -hmm. I don't believe it's really a thing, but uh, it has sometimes been perceived to be the case. The inside gate, seven furlong start, is it a disadvantage? I think it's seven and a mile more than any of them. I see it's, a, it's tricky here mm -hmm. at Laurel, uh, especially the mile. Maybe not seven eighths quite as much, but I, I do see some issues. Yeah, it's, it's just the way, I don't know if the way things see, are angled. I wonder if but it's yeah. sometimes the camera angle that makes you perceive Face that they start a little bit slow. Uh -huh. Now she has gate speed. Yeah. She showed uh, in her two starts to date. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to be fine, but I do get that it's sometimes a little bit of a question mark, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah, it is. But a tiny little hiccup for her, I think, is still going to be all right. She 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 can accelerate into it and be able to kind of just, you know, the road's going to go through her. So I think she's going to be able to control things up front. But uh, fraudulent charge is a, is a horse that showed so much talent early. You know, running against the likes of Street Loot, you name mm -hmm. it. Um, she was running fast at two. She progressed into three. She's coming off the break. That's the, my biggest concern. For her. I have her in second just on the sheer class that she's shown, but I do wonder if she's going to need a race. I know as a three-year-old that one of my notes was that she's grown so much, really mm -hmm. filled out. She's a big filly now, a free walker. Mm -hmm. Love what I've seen from her, but maybe she'll need that kind of race fitness back in here. So I do use her in second based on that class. But let's talk about the horse that you have in second, Belle of the North. We do have a video of her impressive victory as well. And I did speak with Jose Corrales after, and he was saying, well, uh, her dam is a half sister to Zanyada, so we did hope that at mm -hmm. some point uh, she was going to show us that she's cut out for some of the bigger races, perhaps some of the stakes races down the line. And what she showed here was quite professional indeed. Yeah, she she's got a little bit of a ba uh, battle to target, but man, around the turn, I'm like, who is this? Just under a guzzle hold. Mm -hmm. It was Bella the North. I didn't expect that. You know, she made that run at, at Pimlico and hung a little bit late moving up to the contenders, but. Not, not this afternoon. She was able to shift out. And look at this run. Just kind of geared down. Yes, I know this was. Horatio isn't even moving on. No, her. no. I know this is, you know, a, a second slower than Moquist's race. But she could have gone a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it would have been five lengths. But, I mean, she definitely had more in the tank. And uh, that, was, that was like, you know, coming out party there for Bella the North. Yeah, no, this is a, a race I'm really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Race number seven, five and a half furlongs on the turf. Phillies Mess three rolled and up first level allowance. And look, one of my first notes was this race seems wide open. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a fair few that can really jump up and do well. I used the number five not on my watch uh, underneath. First time uh, on the turf for this three year old filly. She's by not this time. Not this time is 13% winners with this turf sprinters. Mm -hmm. Dam is dirt though. So I thought it was quite an interesting move. And I do question, will she like the turf? Yeah, looking at uh, the second, going down second dam, I think it was 86 on its uh, lone turf try. But you know what? She fooled me the other day, Brittany, with that <laughs> horse <laughs> that absolutely ran off the screen. I thought, looked at the breeding, it was all turf, 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 goes to the dirt and just whistles. Now we're going to go dirt thinking dirt's the angle here. You know, I, I, I now to turf. Okay. So that we're yeah. going to, well, here we go again, but not this time <laughs> is, is all right. So I'm going to trust in that off the layoff, working forwardly for this. 
you see that you know, percentage off 180 days, almost 40% with a strong ROI. Yeah, there's fraudulent charge. She's run against the right guy. Yeah, I'm going to just trust in the trainer here that uh, they're going to put it right on the right surface. Yeah, I landed on the, the outside Philly Chrome, plated hot for trainer Justin Nixon. I've been following following her since her debut race uh, on the turf at Pimlico. I feel like she's been getting mm -hmm. better and better every time that she's on the grass. She, I think she got just a slightly bit mm -hmm. outpaced early by Golden Can last time out, but she's got a high draw here she's quick on her feet mm -hmm. she's nimble i think she's going to continue to progress for the nixon yeah. barn yeah with some other speeds in here uh both hammy's horses what a trick pretty laura yeah. it'd be interesting like the first eighth of a mile how this race unfolds who's going to go because i think chrome plated heart has enough ability to drop in and sit a little further back if she wants to I don't think she has to do all the chasing, chasing from the outside. So I think maybe even a little bit covered up trip is going to help her chances this afternoon. I, I think so as well. And both of us used a Polish gal for trainer mm -hmm. Hugh McMahon. Winner last time out at the Maryland allowance level now comes back in here. But look, she's been very, very solid on the turf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's moved way up, uh, you know, ability-wise. And you look at that comparatively to last year, what she's done now. Yeah, and she's done it with trouble as well. A couple of those big races have come with trouble. She's overcome adversity, uh, playing the conditions the right way. Got the yep. state bread, going to try to get this open one done today. Yeah, well, the trouble is, is kind of the prerogative of the closing style runner mm -hmm. that she is, yep. but she navigates it well nonetheless. Race number eight, Maryland Bread, Maryland sired first level allowance. One turn mile for the three-year-olds and up. And uh, I landed on the number six ink, we also have a video of his last outing mm -hmm. where he ran against Alders at that optional claim a start allowance level. He was in between uh, two pacemakers. You can see him there, the number five. Looks done, right? Looks like he's yeah. not going to do mm -hmm. anything here. But of course, we do have that long stretch run to that second wire. Comes back with a really strong rally. And look, it looked like to me like he won, but he just lost the ball. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I, you basically almost counted uh, this guy out, leaving the three mm -hmm. eighths pole. But, you know, Jock just had faith, kept riding and riding and riding. And Gentleman Joe was a horse uh, that we liked that day, was coming off of a level, but it was working razor sharp for Hammy. But he's a horse that's been competitive in two other than kind of races. Now we've got Ink here in a state bred A other than. You see the effort against a quality animal like Gentleman yeah. Joe coming back. Yeah, he's gonna probably going to try to dog the speed of depository and just do that same tactic. He knows he can kind of keep grinding it out and just try to do that to deposit. Rearview mirror, though, there might be a couple horses to overtake late from a little further back, and that would be the two reassured for me. Uh, first time gelding, blinkers go on, lots of good angles. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to see this horse make his best run from the back of the pack that he has shown. Yeah, now making his second start as mm -hmm. a three-year-old. First start as a three-year-old on the main track as well. So, so many possible angles with the number yeah. two uh, reassured to really make him step up. I used Royal Number in second, mm -hmm. though. I felt like after the break, they made him sprint. I think that was a step up mm -hmm. uh, to then get back to uh, the routing that he is very good at. I mean, look at that Federico Tessio run over a mile and an eighth. That was mm -hmm. a strong third. That was, as, uh, that was earlier this year. I think he's just going to continue to develop. I always thought it was a very good looking individual yeah. uh, beautiful white markings on his mm -hmm. face as well though he does have the blinkers on so we can't see that anymore but i think if he's ready to pounce here yeah. based on class he can definitely have them so i wanted to be on board if he does final race on the card made in a special way to four fillies ms three four and five year olds six furlongs at the distance let's look at the number two matitude you decided uh, to pick a race for her here because well she didn't break well at all. No, no, at Timonium, she was just uh, not prepared at the break mm. at all at Timonium. Got left a few lengths and was able to kind of make a pretty good run, yep. though, from the... Uh, you can see it here. I think well, yeah, the there, there biggest is. one. Where is she? We can't find her, there. right? Yeah, she's not in the, on the <laughs> she screen. Was, she was acting up a little <laughs> bit in the gate, uh, wasn't on her best behavior. The gate sprung and it was over. Uh, the speed of Lynch just whistled, but like, just finishes up quite well. Let's call that a workout, right, almost after, after that trouble beginning. I think you're going to see speed. She's got to behave a little bit better. She's going to, you know, be out there whistling on the front end. But American Bastet, I, I, I like her with Miguel Vera. The blinkers going and yeah. going back, keying against the right guy. Comes out of an okay race. Giafuego came back Wednesday to win. I, I think this one is going to lay closer today with the mm -hmm. blinkers and bring a better finish.
Yeah, I, I use the number one royal appointment. Uh, Xavier Perez gets on board. Justin Nixon, I think Xavier is going to be a little bit more aggressive with this runner. He's mm -hmm. kind of left himself with a bit to do in his last outing on the turf. Yeah. I think if he just perhaps gets a, a bit of it more of a hands-on ride, he might just enjoy himself a, a touch better for a good stable and a good horseman in Justin Nixon. That will do it for us uh, with the racing segment of this. But of course, we've got plenty to discuss in lightning round. First topic to address, of course, is the fact that the Stronach 5 did not get hit yesterday. Of course, we kicked off the leg with that $33 Jeremiah O'Dwyer horse. I think a lot of people singled on Boston Kurt. Well, yes. he got beaten as well, unfortunately, resulting in this carryover of 67 and give or take a couple more grand. Yeah, so yeah, let's 80,000. I mean, it's yeah, going to be probably 000. a half a million, uh, I would think, on Friday. We've seen it when this when mm -hmm. this bet carries over like that. It's going to be a huge, huge pot right there. So get get started. I mean, when those entries come out, when they come out uh, soon, a couple days, so you're going to have to get on it. I tell you, um, $33 winner here, $26 winner at Laurel. Wasn't easy. So. No, nope, not easy at all. So looking forward to the sequence that coming up next week on Friday. And yesterday in the opener, we had two-year-olds going along on the turf, and it was quite an impressive colt in XY time being able to hold off the tenacious challenge on the number four, Wish Me Home. You see Wish Me Home there on the outside, but mm -hmm. XY time was not letting that foe go by. I spoke with uh -huh. J.D. Acosta after, and he said, look, even if the wire would have been at the bend, that horse would still not have gone by. I mean, my, my fellow was not giving no. in. Yeah, that was off of a maiden claiming 20 race where he galloped at, at, at uh, Colonial, controlled it there, got, got a little bigger price than what I thought. I lined it 8-1, to one, but... Uh, yeah, and, and was able to prompt the pace, do it, and got by another rival, and, and it looked like Sean Thalsworth, who had the perfect trip, just sit, sitting in a little bit of a yeah. pocket, tucked in there and eased out, and looked like it was going to go right on by. No, this guy, he, he looks just got that deadly combination, speed and stamina. You'll love that. Yeah, looking forward to, to seeing X, Y time next time around. As I highlighted this uh, in the opener of the show as well, one week until this year's Maryland Million. The classic draw, the $150,000 classic will be held, the draw will be held on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Dave Rotman and I, and uh, Keith, let's discuss a couple of these fields. Callie and I discussed uh, the classic uh, yesterday. Of course, we've got mm -hmm. Cordmaker, Galerio in there. But let's discuss uh, the Maryland Million distaff first, of course, headlined by uh, the Queen of Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, beautiful, looking forward to her continuing mm -hmm. the story, and of course, continuing her stakes whole as well after her two dominant dominant back-to-back -back victories in the Alma North and the Weather Fane. I also saw that Street Loot's in there. Street Loot. Dominant in her two-year-old season has continued to find mm -hmm. the winner's circle as well in yeah. stakes company. Is a fair few ways to go, right? Absolutely. But, you know, the road it looks like it's going to go through Hello Beautiful. Going to be an awfully mm -hmm. short price again, which she's yeah. been 20 cents to the dollar, 10 cents to the dollar her last couple. But she might have some company up front. Malibu Beauty is pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, could maybe force mm -hmm. the issue there. And Street lo looking to make that you know, sustained run from off the pace in which we know she can do. Yeah, and you also have uh, Kiss the Girls. It's uh, pre-ended their turf and dirt stakes victories for, for Michael Trombetta. And then I thought it was interesting that Jerry Robles has Field Esprit looking for a fifth win in yeah. a row, maybe lining up in there too. So uh, really looking forward to see how that field will take shape. And in the Maryland Million Lassie, the two-year-old female division is mm -hmm. also well represented. Uh, a couple of eye-catching uh, uh, pre-entries in there, including uh, the Maryland Bread Jester calls no Joy, who was a 10 length made in special weight victors for, victors for trainer Todd Pletcher, then lined up in the grade one for Z, ran sixth in there. She actually also holds a pre entry in the nursery, so it'll be interesting to see if it'll be a, a lady trying mm -hmm. to take on the boys. Absolutely, had a little trouble in that last race as well. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I did see also Waterworks for Steve Asmussen, mm -hmm. who ran to a nine and a quarter victory on her second start. And John Salzman Jr.'s Buff My Boots uh, has also uh, made her name. Uh, appeared on the list as well so definitely a fair few possible uh, two year old ladies that i'm very looking forward to see as uh, you can see the wind is picking up here i think that's our cue uh, to call it a morning but i will be back in the afternoon with Callie francois and uh, keith will be uh, keeping an eye out upstairs you got it everybody enjoy the day good luck and best of luck